Right, we thought uh, people might be interested in what it takes to strip the bolt on the EM2 as we're now cleaning the thing. So the professional is now taking over because, yeah, well, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to film his face unless he's uh, all right with that. To strip the bolt, you've got to press this in and turn it, but you're not going to do that while the striker's still uh, caught. So yeah. to fire it off, you just press down on. Try and keep it on the bench as we can. Some lights on. Whatever you like. So um, there's the seal. If I press on that, that's normally depressed by that bit at the back. But it won't do it because these. Right, so locking out. flaps are in the way. So pressing on that, there's nothing. Yeah. Now the locking flaps are out. Give it a whack. Get your flaps out. How oh, dare you. And then when you press on that, then with yep. some pressure, because there's quite a lot of pressure on that. There is, yeah. Then the striker will go forward and you can press that and turn it. And just sit and done. And it will eventually come out. Go on, you bastard, come out. And then you've got two springs in there. Yeah, two springs. And you've got one of which was added later, I believe. Prime pin in the sleeve. Yeah. And note, remember yes. I said about the burrs? So this is fired 80 rounds and it's burred out like the other one was. Yes, design flaw, metallurgy, not quite sure. There's a lot of Stop gas moving about. <laughs> on the uh, firing pin as well. Yeah, I can't quite focus. Oh, there we go. That's got it. So just about C. Yeah, the firing pin is getting uh, yeah, carbon be fouling. Coming by the back around the edges of the cases, although well, they didn't appear to be that no. dirty. Yeah, it smells like. It definitely does. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Uh, Where did you put that? What? Yeah. yeah, got it. Just trying to keep track. And the other thing is, these things have a tendency to wobble it about, they'll, they'll eventually fall out. Yep. And that's as far as you normally strip it. Yes. Do you want to strip it further and show the extractor? <laughs> Up to you. Yes. It does get across the point of how unbelievably complicated this weapon is. Extractor, there's a spring there. So if you this is a the spring out of the slot. This is it's called a bolt, and it is a nice unitary uh, cylindrical thing, but it's actually the bolt carrier if and you, the bolt in one. Look at it, it, that cut out there so that you can stick a tool in there and lift like that. Uh, yeah. And then it will just come out. So there's the spring. There's Whoops. The, there's the extractor. Now yeah. If you want to strip this bit, what do we call this in the end? I can't remember. The thing that prevents the uh, bolt from going forward. Yeah. Until it's actually, um, or the... Um, the firing pin from going forward. Not the firing pin. The uh, cock and handle gas cylinder. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that just so this confuses even us. So that the front, and then there's that piece. And the only other piece that we haven't stripped down, uh, you want me to strip it down? It's not that easy to strip down. Having said that, it's not that difficult either. You want to do it, I can tell. Well, all you've got to do is there's the actual spring. Yeah. Uh, there's my pointer gun. So there's the sear, and there's the spring. What you need is a plastic finger. Hand on a stick like uh, Matthias has got. Yeah, so I forgot you had your own version of the patented yeah. plastic See it. See a spring. Yep. And to strip this down, right, I'm going to be going to adopt the glasses. Oh, look, they're gone. <laughs> right, so the <laughs> he's wandered off because he's gone to get his uh, eye protection because this thing's under pressure and uh, oh, may offend oh, if it hits you in the eyes or teeth. Or anywhere for that matter. You don't want it up your nose, that's for sure. Can you see in the back end of that? The spring has got um, like a catch on it, so it's a step. Uh, nope. Yep. So you've got to actually push that step that way and then slide it that it's way. It's a long, flat spring. Let's see if I can uh, manage to do it. Mm, not with that, I can't. Now we've got already lots of bits. That's not a bit. And that's not a bit. But these are all bits. There's your extractor. Probably one of the more sensible bits of the design. In that it's quite robust, or seems to be. It's the end cap that Mike saw Mike taking off. 
your nested double springs, one of which was added later to give increased spring pressure. And you've got your firing pin sleeve and firing pin. So see the way this strips down, you've got it lifted above the sear. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, we're looking at the wrong thing. So yep. that's lifted above the sear and then push the back end of that spring up and push it forward to see clear why it. you weren't entirely keen to do it. I'd forgotten about this bit. And then once that's out of the way, that should just come out. Yeah, it's free. Again, it's getting that past the catch. And every time you do this, you risk setting the spring slightly. If you told me that, I would have said, don't do it. I shouldn't worry about it. I've got it working fine. It's not going for some reason. Or is it not coming off? Failure is always an option, Mike. We no. can leave it there. No, no, never fail. <laughs> the spring of fail. I didn't have it clear enough for the um, spring. Someone will edit this, I'm sure. But it won't be me. I haven't actually done any cleaning yet, impressively. I might get away without so doing any. Oh, right. There we go. That's it, actually, above. Let's see here. Get to mm -hmm. a certain point in the spring. There we go. So that what this bit? What's this bit of nonsense? This is the sear spring. Sear spring, which is the bit that uh, this is the only Keep it one. Still. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's not just a straightforward flat spring. It's no. got a lug on the end. So even this single component is a complex thing to manufacture, and then of course to heat treat. And then you got this, which is a very complex piece to manufacture. What the hell? Where I'd forgotten about that as well. That's your sear. Yep. Multiple different facets to machine on that. Nonsense. There are many, many Wonderful, surfaces. but nonsense. And that operates on something. On there. Ah uh, uh, yes. And already this thing is because of the edges are burning, you can yeah. can you feel that? You can feel it through the gloves. Yes, I can. I can, unfortunately. So that's Which is where, why we're not shooting this. That's where the locking very catches much. actually get pushed out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, not really good. Yeah, so the sear, the sear is dropping out of the way and letting so that. So this, which was free 80 forward. odd rounds ago. Yeah. Let's get the right orientation. Is now, you can feel it, that those burrs mm. contacting the edge. This is coming down. So it would be fair to say we have a bit of a, a sneaking suspicion that had this thing been allowed to remain in service as rifle number 9 or rifle number 10 or X2E1 or whichever version, there'd have been a long development period, a bit like the SA-80 had, before it was actually fit for, for service. And it would always been complex. Well, if you look at the, the operations required to make any of these bits, yeah. even that spring. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there must have been an easier way to make that catch on the end. So just to finish off, let's just put all the bits in shot. I might come back and ask you to do a trigger mech as well, because I'm sure people will be horrified slash delighted by that. There's that. I mean, look at that. Look at the machining required for that as well. Massively complicated. I've just realised my screwdriver isn't that quality that I thought ah. it was the end just fell off it. Oh dear, that's not good. Better that than the gun breaking. Yeah, so there you go. Oh, no, we've missed a bit. <laughs> Firing pin sleeve. Uh, where are your locking flaps? There's one, there's the other. So that's uh, reminiscent of a certain German weapon. And that would be something that you'd have I'm to sure change in viewers can guess. Yes, yeah. So, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen separate components for your bolt. Uh, that's not including the piston slash cocking handle mount. Bolt. <laughs> ah, yeah. Pin. This looks familiar. Extractor. Spring. And two pins. One, two, three, four, six components. Six components on the AK bolt, 14 on the M2.
Now my maths isn't great, that's more than twice as many.